Because I'm Human by Les I. Narrated by Colin Brown. Hey, Gavin, grab your dad's rifle, shouted Riley as he stormed into the barn. He slammed his backpack on the floor, raising a small cloud of chaff and dust that rose in the shaft of light beaming through the open door. I've got something for target practice. Gavin rose from a tattered old lounge chair. He pushed his glasses up, obediently turned, and started heading towards the loft, where they hid the key for the gun cupboard. He stopped in his tracks, and his shoulders stiffened. Did he see something moving in the back? He turned toward Riley. Wait, uh, why? What target practice? He heard a muffled whimper coming from the back and felt the color leaving his face. Riley bent down to his backpack, which was still in silhouette. Relax. Riley unzipped the backpack, and Gavin squinted as he saw what looked like a tiny foot. Gavin was anything but relaxed. He scowled. Riley reached inside the bag and grabbed what looked like a newborn baby by a leg. Tiny arms and legs gyrated in a slow, rhythmic motion. <coughs> the cry was a distorted sound and was loud and piercing. Then Gavin's eyes adjusted to the light, and he relaxed slightly. He was looking at one of those robot babies they gave to girls at school. A dusty white ball of fur ran over, started barking, and wagging her tail. She leaped up, trying to lick the robot, but Riley pulled it away, chuckling as he did. <coughs> down, Bell, down, said Gavin, but Bell just kept running around and leaping up at Riley. Gavin walked over and grabbed Bell by the collar. He tied her to a leash that was hanging near the door. <coughs> Gavin poked his head out of the door. His eyes darted side to side. Gently, he closed the door, though no one was close enough to hear it slam. Gavin held out his hands. Let me have a look at it. Riley passed it to Gavin. The face was rubbery, but had the proportions of a newborn baby. It reminded him of his sister when she was born. The eyes seemed to follow him. They were following him, and they blinked. This one was somehow more real than what he had seen before, and somehow creepier. It's supposed to stop crying if you give it a bottle. Gavin looked with anticipation at Riley. Riley grabbed the bottle from his bag, smirking. Gavin gave it the bottle, and the jaw started moving with a faint buzzing sound that he could barely hear over a recording of sucking. After a while, it seemed to be satisfied, yet it still had a frown. Gavin removed the bottle. <coughs> Riley motioned for the robot, and Gavin gently passed it back. Riley snatched it and pressed something on its back. It made beeping sounds like a dishwasher that had finished its cycle and the robot became frozen and silent. You want to shoot it? That's just creepy. Riley laughed. It's not like it's real or anything. You shoot rabbits, don't you? Gavin scowled. That's different. Where did you get it? Riley rolled his eyes. I nicked it from school. He thrust his chest forward slightly and pointed at the gun cupboard. Come on, just grab the rifle already. But why do you want to shoot it? It kept me awake all night. Gavin noticed that Riley's eyes were red. He screwed up his nose. You had it in your home last night? Why? Iville asked her questions. Just get the gun. Gavin sighed. I don't have any bullets. I've got some bullets, but I thought your dad has boxes of them in the cupboard. Yeah, but they're all sealed, and dad would know if anyone used them. Anyway, someone will hear it. No one's going to hear it. Your nearest neighbor is that old Mr. Harris and he's deaf. His dogs will go nuts. His dogs go nuts all the time for nothing. What if someone comes home? You told me that they wouldn't be back from the city until tomorrow. Remember? They come back early sometimes. Riley rolled his eyes. Just get the gun. I don't think it's a good idea. Riley raised an eyebrow and grinned. It would be a shame if Mandy found out that you've got a crush on her. You wouldn't. I mean... I don't have a crush on her. Yeah, right, said Riley with a mischievous grin. You don't come around to my place all the time to see my sister. Anyway, she already knows. Gavin shrugged his shoulders and tilted his head down. It doesn't matter anyway, because she likes Mark. Riley said, I don't know if she's that keen on him. Besides, he's weird. Riley's eyes narrowed. Anyway, 
What about all those times that I covered for you? Riley let those words hang in an awkward silence. Gavin's shoulders slumped. Then he looked at the loft where the key was. Gavin trudged towards the ladder and muttered under his breath. You mean all those times you talked me into doing stuff you didn't want to do yourself? He retrieved the key from the loft, and after a lazy stroll to the gun cupboard, he opened it. You sure you want to do this? Riley hung the robot from the neck on the peppered target with a piece of old rope. Any time this decade. Gavin returned with the rifle. He was wearing gloves, earmuffs, and yellow glasses. He handed Riley a spare set of safety gear, who put it all on without hesitation. Gavin then tried to give the rifle to Riley. Riley held up a hand like a cop stopping traffic. You go first. Riley pulled some bullets from his pocket and held them out to Gavin. Gavin's jaw dropped a little. It was your idea. You shoot it. Riley took the gun and loaded it like he was training for the military. Safety's off. Riley tried to hand it back to Gavin. You shoot. Gavin stood there frozen. Riley groaned. You're not scared, are you? It's not real. That thing doesn't feel anything. It's a machine. Gavin put his hands on his hips, shoulders straight, head back, and looked Riley in the eye. No, I'm not scared. And I know it isn't real. Gavin sighed and shook his head. Riley, you're a great friend. But sometimes, sometimes you're a real pain. I'm not your slave. I don't have to do everything you tell me. Especially when it's weird. Belle stood up, barked, and waved her tail. Clang! The barn door swung open. The room seemed to glow red as Mandy raced in and looked around. Seeing the robot, she shook her head. Gavin gulped softly. Mandy's eyes were laser beams that glared at the two boys. Her auburn hair swung around as she turned and dashed towards the target, seemingly oblivious to the loaded gun. Gavin lunged at the rifle, trying to point it at the ground. Bang! Cha-ching! Whiz! Tang! Bell barked. Gavin's heart pounded. He looked around. Everyone okay? No one replied, but he was relieved to see that they were all still standing. He looked over at Bell. Close to her head was a ray of light that emanated from a hole in the wall. Mandy shook her head. Her nostrils flared. Gavin gulped audibly this time. Mandy removed the robot from its noose, then raced back to the door, slamming it on her way out. Riley laughed nervously. Well, that didn't go the way I planned. Gavin shook his head. Riley looked at Gavin. Anyway, what's the big deal about shooting some latex and wires? You know it's not real. Gavin looked back at Riley. You don't get it. Shooting it just seems too weird. It's, it's too cruel. After a thoughtful pause, he offered. It's not because it's human. It's because I am. This has been a read by Colin Brown for Les I. Look me up on Fiverr.com at CBrown006.